I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 12 of my book, Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore Boat and Kayak, and you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com. I'll be making uh, fluke bucktails in this video, but uh, the steps are pretty much the same for bucktails for uh, stripers and other fish as well. Uh, since I'm making fluke bucktails, I'm using an uh, ultra minnow mold made by Do It. Uh, this particular mold makes jigs of one half, three quarter, one, and one and a half ounces. So I'm very particular about uh, the hooks in my jigs uh, for any species, but uh, for fluke, I'm using Gamagatsu 604 as the style. Uh, the hook sizes for one half ounce, I use a 4 0. For the three quarter, I use a 5 0. For the one, I use a 6 0. And for the um, ounce and a half, I use a 7 -0. Now, those sound like big sizes, but that's just uh, due to the way that Gamagatsu uh, sizes their hooks. When working with lead, you definitely want to be in a ventilated area. This is a ventilated garage, and uh, safety goggles, long brimmed hat, long sleeve shirt, gloves, all those kinds of things. Uh, you definitely got to be careful. The melter is called a hot pot, too. Uh, it's very convenient to use. To paint the jigs, I'm using Protec powder paint. I'm using a nail to stir up the powder uh, before I dip in the jig, and that's a very important step. I've got a uh, small propane torch going there, and I'm just going to heat this jig, get it up pretty hot, uh, heat it evenly, and then what we'll take is a quick dip into the powder, and it will be done. What you want to see when you dip that in there is you want it to come out and look wet. Uh, it's wet, it's hanging up on the wire, and, and that one's good. And after I pulled it out of the paint, you probably noticed that I gave it a couple of real good taps on the side of the jar, and that, that's really important to uh, knock off any excess powder. And I'll fluff that powder up uh, after every two jigs or so. To get the hardest possible finish on the powder paint, I'll heat them in the oven uh, for about 25 minutes, 275 to 300 degrees. You need to be careful not to go too much hotter than that because the high heat can damage some hook finishes. So I don't do this professionally. I'm doing this uh, for my own purposes. So I'm you know, not real fast about it. I don't even use a vise. I do this all by hand. I've been doing it this way for many, many years. And it all works out fine. So what I'm doing there is uh, I've got some uh, size D rod winding thread. And I just put a, a layer down on the collar of the jig. And you'll see I've got uh, a couple piles of white hair cut from a deer tail. Very important, this step here, I'm winding that thread on fairly loose. Um, and you'll see why in a second. But I'm just you know, going to get that hair on there, make some loose wraps with the thread. And I'll, I usually work a little faster than this, but for video purposes, I'll keep it nice and slow. Uh, the purpose of wrapping this on loosely is that after you've got it there, see, now I can spread the hair out because I didn't cinch it down real tight. So I can spread it out nice and evenly, very uniform, and get it just the way I want it. Now I can uh, wrap it tightly to make sure that that hair is going to stay on. And you know, I'll go around a bunch of times, you know, make sure that everything's uh, nice and tight. Now I'll take a sharp box cutter and just uh, trim that extra hair along the, uh, the jig head. Now once all of that is trimmed up nicely, uh, I can resume the tight wrapping and, and really this is going to be the, the finished wrapping. And I can go all along that edge that I just cut and I'll end up with a nice uh, uniform transition there from the head to the thread. So even if you don't want to do this from scratch, um, anybody who does a lot of this fishing probably has a lot of beat up bucktails uh, with the hair thinned out by fish. Uh, you could use these steps to um, recover those bucktails and you know, make them fishable again. 
And there's probably better ways to do this, but I always have a loop of thread sitting around. Just lay that over the wrap to um, finish up, and I'll just make a few wraps over that loop, cut that, put it in the loop, pull it through. Real simple, the jig's going to be finished. And before I fish these, I'll uh, coat the thread with some epoxy to make it uh, nice and durable so the, the fish don't easily damage it. And the nice thing about making your own bucktails is that you can have some variation, experiment a little bit, uh, different color heads and different color hair and uh, eyes. And it's just uh, nice to catch fish on something that you've created. All right, I encourage you to check out Fishing for Summer Flounder, fluke jigging from shoreboat and kayak at flounderbook.com.